Blessed it be the Holy Trinity, one God, the fountain of living water, the rock who gave us birth, our light, and our salvation. Amen. Let us come into the light, the revealing and healing light of God. God of grace and glory, you have brought us through the night of sin into the light of Jesus' resurrection, yet our lives are still shadowed by sin. Make us alive in Christ, O God. Make us new as you make all things new. Rescue us from evil and the gloom of sin. Renew us in grace and restore us to living in your holiness through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Rejoice with all creation around God's throne. The light of the risen Christ puts to flight all evil deeds, washes away sin, restores innocence to the fallen, casts out hate, brings peace and humbles earthly pride. Jesus Christ loves you and frees you from your sins by his blood. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us pray. O oh God, you teach us that without love, our actions gain nothing. Pour into our hearts your most excellent gift of love, that made alive by your Spirit, we may know goodness and peace through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from Acts. The apostles and the other believers in Judea heard that non-Jewish people had accepted God's teaching too. But when Peter came to Jerusalem, some believers argued with him. They said, you went into the homes of people who are not Jews, and are not circumcised. You even ate with them. So Peter explained the whole story to them. Peter said, I was in the city of Joppa. While I was praying, a vision came to me. In the vision, I saw something come down from the sky. It looked like a big sheet. It was being lowered to the ground by its four corners. It came down and stopped very close to me. I looked inside it. I saw animals both tame and wild. I saw animals that crawl and birds that fly in the air. I heard a voice say to me, Get up, Peter. Kill any of these animals and eat it. But I said, I would never do that, Lord. I have never eaten anything that is unholy or not pure. But the voice from the sky answered again, God has made these things clean. Don't call them unholy. This happened three times. Then the whole thing was taken back into the sky. Then three men came to the house where I was staying. These three men were sent to me from the city of Caesarea. The Spirit told me to go with them without doubting. These six brothers here also went with me. We went to the house of Cornelius. Cornelius told us about the angel he saw 
standing in his house. The angel said to Cornelius, send some men to Joppa. Invite Simon Peter to come. He will speak to you. The things he will say will save you and all your family. After I began my speech, the Holy Spirit came on them the same as he came on us at the beginning. Then I remembered the words of the Lord Jesus. The Lord said, John baptized people in water, but you will be baptized in the Holy Spirit. God gave to these people the same gift He gave to us who believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. So could I stop the work of God? No. When the Jewish believers heard these things, they stopped arguing. They praised God and said, so God is allowing the non-Jewish people to change their hearts and have life the same as us. Word of God, word of life. The Holy Gospel according to John. When Judas was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man receives His glory. And God receives glory through the Son of Man. If God receives glory through him, then God will give glory to the Son through himself. God will give him glory quickly. Jesus said, My children, I will be with you only a short time more. You will look for me. And what I told the Jewish leaders, I tell you now. Where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment. Love each other. You must love each other like I loved you. All people will know that you are my followers if you love each other. The Gospel of the Lord. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. With these words, Charles Dickens began his book, A Tale of Two Cities. We might ask that of the church. Is this the best or the worst of times for the body of Christ? A recent front page article in our local newspaper announced that First Presbyterian Church a congregation just a few blocks away, and in the city for over two centuries is closing its doors. Unable to face the challenges that city ministry in 2016 places before its aging and declining membership. We might ask the same question of Trinity Lutheran hearing, and deaf. We seem to lose more members than we gain, and those that are here are getting older. People are afraid to come into the city. It's tempting to look at the paintings on the wall here and envision much more exciting, much more more prosperous days back there in the corner, is one of the churches that was built from what is known as Three Chapels Sunday. The pastor preached on Peter's words at the Transfiguration, let us build three booths. The pastor announced that he would sit in the chancel until people gave enough money to build three new churches. And in one afternoon, that happened. We might consider that even then there were problems. 
I'm reading Brian Trupp's History of Trinity, which tells of short pastorates, destructive gossip, and squabbles over what language to be used in worship, English or German. Luke's history of the church in the book of Acts tells of good times and bad. And while Luke is honest about good and bad days, he seems to elevate the good to incredible proportions. <coughs> Acts begins with Pentecost, an amazing show. Tongues of fire, people speaking in language that non-Jews can hear as their own. 3,000 people present themselves for baptism after a short and rather critical sermon. Mighty deeds are done. Everyone's needs are met. Everyone comes to church and the whole city says good things about them. How are we doing? Is this the best of times? The worst of times? Or how do we see it? Remember way back three weeks ago? John tells of a gathering of the small band of followers of Jesus. And they're gathered because of good news and bad news. Jesus is risen. The leader who was dead is now alive. Some of them have even seen Him. They are locked in a room because they are afraid. Afraid that nothing has changed. Yes, Jesus has risen, but Pilate is still governor. Herod is still king. Annas and Caiaphas still in charge at the temple and the crowd as fickle as ever. What shall we do today? Shall we celebrate or mourn? Be joyous or be frightened? Go out boldly into a hostile world or stay shut up behind locked doors where we are safe but meaningless. Does it all just depend on how we see things? Is the glass half empty or half full? Or has the Holy Spirit truly come upon us? Has the risen Christ not said to us, peace be with you? As the Father has sent me, so I send you. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven. Wouldn't it be wonderful to be in a church like the church in Acts? We're in another kind of church 2,000 years later, aren't we? We get into long, drawn-out battles over who is really welcome and who isn't. We're happy to welcome people like us, but people who aren't like us, well, maybe, maybe not. We fight over what shades of paint to use. A pastor I know who does consulting work with conflicted congregations told me, last week I saw the church at its best and it's worst, ten minutes apart. It seems that a church council that he was working with had received a large bequest, over a million dollars. They voted unanimously to give half the money to Lutheran world hunger. Shortly afterwards, after some harsh and hurtful debate, they voted, again unanimously, 
against moving the lectern two feet. A frightened church seems to look to the world for gimmicks. Big bands, superstar preachers, coffee bars, anything to bring people in. But there is a way to make church special every week. To make every week Christmas, Easter, Pentecost. To be an empowered church that knows that every Sunday is Easter. To know that Jesus is today present in water and word, in bread and wine. Because we are Easter people. Look around this congregation and so many others and you will see people who do not fear the present nor long for the past because the Spirit is empowering them daily. Every day is Pentecost. The light show is the light that comes from them. The new language is the one that they speak, spoken in a new way. Not words to hurt or conquer, but words that heal and give hope. Many of you are familiar with Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through Christ who empowers me, says Paul. It shows up on book covers and coffee mugs and pens and things that are passed around. But all too often I think it's misunderstood. It does not mean that using the power of Jesus I can do whatever I want for myself. But with the power of Jesus I and we can be the church. Can be bold people and not frightened people. Through Christ, I can bring healing to a hurting world, or at least some people in it. Through Christ, I can bring peace where there is war, at least in some corner of my life. I can bring bounty where there is want. I can bring hope where there is despair. It is the best of times. It is the worst of times. The spirit of the risen Christ is the difference. Amen. Let us affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, He rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rooted in the abundant life and love of Jesus Christ, we pray for the life of the church, the lives of people in need, and the life of all creation. Holy God, by Your Holy Spirit, reveal to us the saving work of Christ. Strengthen Your church with the good news that leads to limitless life for all. We pray for our covenant congregation, Christ Episcopal Church, for the congregations and clergy of the West Berks Mission District, 
for Hope Lutheran Church and their pastor, Mary. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Send us to places far and near and join our voices in chorus with all creation. You use us to show others your abundant goodness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. End war and the human desire to hold on to power. Free all people to love both neighbor and enemy, and make your church an example of such love. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Surround people who are hurting with agents of your healing and messengers of your peace. We pray for Dee and Tina and all those that we name now aloud or in our hearts. Provide safe communities for those who struggle with homelessness in our country and for all who are in need. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Strengthen the bonds of shared service between congregations and social ministries. Bless our congregation's relationship with Burke's Women in Crisis, Opportunity House, Tenth and Penn Elementary, Mary Shelter, and local mental health agencies. Guide us in doing your work together. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In Christ's death and resurrection, you have fulfilled your work for the sake of your saints. Come swiftly to dwell among us and make all things new. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We deliver all this into your care, O God, trusting in the work of your Holy Spirit to bring all things into the risen life of Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share the Lord's peace. Let us pray. <coughs> Blessed are you, O God, ruler of heaven and earth. Day by day you shower us with blessings. As you have raised us to new life in Christ, give us glad and generous hearts, ready to praise you and to respond to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Holy One, the beginning and the end, the giver of life, blessed are you for the birth of creation. Blessed are you in the darkness and in the light. Blessed are you for your promise to your people. Blessed are you in the prophet's hopes and dreams. Blessed are you for Mary's openness to your will. Blessed are you for your son Jesus, the Word made flesh. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ died. Christ is risen finished. We believe Christ will come down again. With this bread and cup, we remember your word dwelling among us, full of grace and truth. We remember our new birth in his death and resurrection. We look with hope for his coming. 
Come, Lord Jesus. Holy God, we long for your Spirit. Come among us. Bless this meal. May your word take flesh in us. Awake your people. Fill us with your light. Bring the gift of peace on earth. Come, Lord Jesus. All praise and glory are yours, Holy One of Israel, Word of God incarnate, power of the Most High, one God now and forever. Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table of life is spread before you. Feast on the goodness and mercy of God. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in His grace. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, O God, that you make your home with us, bringing heaven to earth in this holy meal. Fill us with your Spirit as we go from here, that we may wipe away tears, tend those in mourning and pain, seek the healing of the nations, and bring to earth the presence of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The blessings of the Lord God Almighty, the blessings of Christ the Lamb who was slain, the blessing of the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace. Share the good news. Alleluia. Alleluia.